different. The last few pat projects I've done, the fabric has been very finicky and ill-behaved. So this time I'm going to be using a very nice, well-behaved woven fabric. And this is the pattern we're going to be using. There we go. This is a Butterick pattern. And I'm going to be doing this version here. It's got a longer sleeve. It has a big collar and it has buttons that go all the way down. That one stops here at the waist. This one buttons, uh, there's 10 buttons. This one has little flaps, this one does not. So anyway, this is the version I'm gonna be doing. And you can see in theirs, it's like in a hound's tooth check looking uh, pattern. So this is what I'm gonna be using. Now, this is just a printed plaid. It is not a woven plaid, so the back side, it's not, uh, two-sided, okay? But it's 100% cotton. It is a thicker fabric. It's similar to that uh, home deck fabric that I use for a lot of dresses uh, because it's, it's nice and thick, but it's very soft because as every time I use 100% cotton, I pre-wash it on hot and I pre-dry it on hot because I wanna get all of the sizing, all of the shrinkage that I can out of the way before I cut it out. So with that, when we cut out, I am going to be working to match my plaids, you know, because this has a lot of panels. It's got princess seams and it's got a lot of straight panels going down. So I'm gonna be working on matching plaids, which is good. Also, this pattern has um, size differences based on your cup size. So you're gonna want to measure yourself before you cut this out and it'll show in the instructions here there it'll show in the instructions where to measure to find out what your cup size is and the difference between up here and your fullest point will tell you and they have um, three different versions they have an a b a c and a d version so you'll be able to choose that and um, yeah, it's gonna be good. There's gonna be several things we're gonna come across while we're working on it. It'll have an invisible zipper and I am gonna be doing an invisible zipper this time. And uh, it has a several other things. So first thing I need to do is make sure that my fabric is as close to the straight of grain as, I can, as it can be. And I hope it is. I really hope it is. We want it to be printed true. So let me go ahead and rip it. Okay, so I just took a tear straight across my fabric at the end here. You can tell where I purchased it. You know, it was on clearance, as I do. Um, and you can tell on this side, I have about a quarter inch above that blue line. Down here on this side, it's uh, maybe about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch difference. So that is actually pretty straight for a print. So I'm not gonna worry about it, you know, being too wonky because sometimes if you were to tear this and say it was like way up here on this side and down here or lower on this side, um, you might wanna rethink making a garment out of it or trying to match your plaids because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get things a little bit skewed. By the time you wash it and it settles, it's gonna settle wonky if you uh, try to match plaids with something like that. So this looks good. 
I'm going to go ahead and cut out my pattern. All right, so these are my bodice pieces. Well, I have them spread out here. Now, the back pieces, there is a side back and a center back. And that's just what they are, a side and a center. They don't have gradations. It's the front where you have the choice of which uh, side front and which front because um, these are the ones that are adjusted for cup size. Now, I just wanted to point one thing out to you. Um, this is your apex point, okay? And if you want to, if you're at all nervous about the fit of this, you might want to just do a mock-up, okay? Um, it looks like to me that they are putting a lot of ease in this bodice. Um, the size 16 says that the at the widest point where that apex is is 46 inches and size 16 is intended to be for a bust measurement of 38 inches so that's eight inches of ease okay so because it looks like there is so much ease built into this I'm not going to stress about lowering an apex or something like that on this particular pattern because one there's not a dart pointing at it or I have enough ease that I think I'm going to be able to to make it work plus the um, curve of this princess seam it's not so extreme it's not coming into the armhole it's not so extreme that it's going to make it really obvious so I think that that is fine for this pattern um, now there is one thing though I am going to double check and that is the sleeve. I am a curvy middle-aged woman who does have arms that are not toothpick thin. So what I am going to do is make sure these sleeves are going to wrap around my arm with enough ease left over. So the first thing I'm going to do is just lay these out and I'm going to overlap them by one and a quarter inches. That's going to build in my seam allowance. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have it taped at the very top and the very bottom here. Let's see if I can lift this up so that I can show you it's one and a quarter inches that's overlapped. All right, that'll give me my five eighths on each side if I was to sew it together. And what I would do is measure around, you know, the thick part of your upper arm and then measure across here in a corresponding place. So if I was to cut out a size 16, now they're going to put dimensions here. I don't trust other cars turn signals. I want to measure it for myself. So here's my 16. If I put my measuring tape in here, um, right about where my seam allowance would take me to, they're actually accurate. It says 14 and a half. Okay. My arm is 13. So that's going to give me one and a half inches of ease. Will I be able to move my arm? Yes. Will it be super comfortable? And if I move my arm all over the place, will it not bind? I don't know. I can't guarantee that. Okay, so real quick, I'm just going to show you how I'm altering this pattern to fit my arm. And again, with every alteration, there's numerous ways to do it. I'm just showing you my way for this time. And because this is a tricky um, sleeve where there's a center seam in it, I want to make sure that the way that I'm adding space to it is not going to change this armhole, is not going to make it too wide, because one of the design features of this blouse is that it comes down to a fairly narrow three-quarter three quarter length uh, cuff area. So I want to make sure that this part down here does not blow out too wide. So this side is done. I'll show you the way that I do it. There's a point right here where the pattern takes an abrupt turn south. All right. I am going to make sure that my pattern is nice and straight on my grid with the grain line and draw a line. I'm going to be cutting out size 16, which is this uh, micro dot here. And I'm going to line up my ruler so that it is also on the straight. That's pretty good. I'm just going to draw a line straight down. I'm going to go ahead and cut this pattern straight up the top all the way to the top point here. I'm going to leave a little piece of paper connecting it 
but I'm gonna get probably within um, at least a quarter inch of that, um, the top of my pattern piece. Okay, now I'm gonna get a piece of, of tissue paper. This is actually from another pattern that I cut out a while back, and they don't usually come in white, so I saved a big chunk of it, because, you know, it comes in handy. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this on top of my scrap fabric, and I'm gonna tape down Actually, I need to iron this, but I'm going to tape down this side so it's attached to it. Okay, so now I have this side taped down. This side is still loose. And it's at this point that I want to add an inch because I'm adding two inches to my ease, one inch on this side and one inch on this side. So right about at this point, I am just going to be bending my piece out and placing it, and it's not an exact, but it's pretty close to one inch. Now this is gonna wanna curve and like stick up a little bit. That's okay for right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and at that point, put a little piece of tape to hold it. Now I wanna bring this side down here as it comes to the bottom. Um, I still wanna have a fairly small cuff. So I'm gonna give myself about an extra quarter inch space. You know, I don't want it too drastic, but I think at about a quarter inch, I'll have enough room. Now this side is gonna be a little bit shorter, which is fine, we can add that length. And up um, higher, there's gonna be places where you just need to push down on your tissue paper to make a little fold, but that way your, your pattern piece is gonna lie flat. So then down here, I'm gonna put another piece of tape. Oops, wants to move easily. So now I can come back with my ruler Continue this line here all the way over to where the edge of this piece is. All right, Let's see if you can see that. So I just continued this line over, match it up with here, and that's my new piece over there. Now, if you need to put a couple more pieces of tape here, here to hold this, that'll be fine. Okay, so now this is my finished. Uh, altered sleeve and if you do this and you get to this point where you're curving it back down and it seems like you've got a very noticeable curve here just trim it off so it's nice and smooth because if you if you don't when you sew your sleeve it can have a hump there which is you know not lovely but if you just kind of smooth it out you're still going to get um, your extra ease and it'll make the pattern fit nicely so i can see down here my dots are still matching here are my hash marks, you know, so it's going to work out just fine. There's actually some easing that we're going to be putting in here when we set the sleeve into the armhole, so it's all good. Alrighty, so I wanted to get started showing you how to, I'm matching plaids, and I think I found a problem with this pattern I just want to show you. Um, this notch here, and I am, they are both um, bodice front for a D cup, bodice front for a D cup, okay? So I've got the right pieces. But, if you can see, here's my notch on my side front, here's my notch on my bodice front, okay? This is supposed to match up with this, and it's not. I think the notch on one or the other is mismarked. So, what I'm going to do, because this one looks like it's correct. For a princess seam, there's always a top notch at the top of your easing and a bottom notch at the bottom of your easing. I'm actually going to go ahead and draw a new notch over here and cross this one out so that I have that straightened. Because even when I tried it from the top and got the top notch there and rolled it down, it still wasn't lining up. So I think that this is a typo. So... Just putting that aside for a minute. What I need to do is figure out how to match my plaids. And I start out with the center front. And you can see I have my center front with the uh, largest portion of this plaid motif going straight down the middle, okay? So it's folded like that. That's what I have going down my center front. So now I need to figure out where to place this one, which has a lot of curve to it. So it's not gonna be perfect, but I want to figure out the best placement possible. So for this, I'm actually more concerned that the top is going to match up than the bottom. It just seems like that'll be more obvious to me. And so what I'm gonna do is, you may not be able to see it, but my blue line is here. 
okay and up here so what I'm going to do is draw where that blue line is on this pattern down there and up here and um, down here I can see my blue line should be right about here and here so here I'm just doing one side at a time I will do this side then flip it over and do the other side that way I can make sure everything is nice and straight so here's my little blue mark and I have it lined up with the blue and here's another one another one and so on so I'm gonna go ahead pin this cut it out and then I can flip this one over all right so here is my piece and this is again my little blue marks and it's just I just flipped it it's still pinned with the right side up underneath here so then I could turn my fabric upside down that way I make sure you know I have wrong side to wrong side so I'm getting two different sides here and I can just place it so that it's going to match up exactly on top of this piece then I'm just going to replace my pins to hold these two together and go ahead and cut around this side okay so now here I am again now the next piece I'm going to uh, cut out is the one that attaches here at this side so this is my side front it's going to be my side back okay so here is my back piece I mean my side back sorry and I'm going to lay that over where this is and I can see that from my notches here my edges that's where it's going to line up so holding it in place I'm going to get my blue pencil here and cover color where these blue spots are now I only have two because down here and down here um, just to make it a little more interesting I'm going to actually add the yellow because that's going to give me one more chance to make sure I get it right so there's a yellow up here and a yellow right here okay so now I don't know if you can see I have blue and yellow so when I go to my fabric I want to make sure that I place this with my straight running exactly parallel with you know my design of my plaid and match up this blue and this blue right there and the yellows are also going to line up so if I tilt it so that it's matching this and that's still matching so now this one is placed so I'm going to go ahead and cut it and that's just kind of how I do it and I work all the way around to the back so from here I'm going to go to the center back and that should should give me a lined up center back and then when we uh, start the skirt placement what I'm going to do is just take my um, center front and carry that down okay so now it's time to transition from my center front bodice to my center front skirt and my pattern pieces are upside down because this one was upside down so this one is also so that my notches can match up so it's going to be the same process where I'm going to uh, I'm going to color it on this side just so I can see my, a couple designation marks with my blue pencil and I can also see that I have a yellow stripe here and a yellow stripe here okay so I just did that so it helps me look all the way through actually you know it's easier if I flip it this way I can see it even easier so matching up my notch is here you know it's just upside down um, center front fold to center front fold notch to notch what I'm going to do is color in on my skirt piece this blue here and blue here and yellow here and yellow here okay so then I can go ahead and take this piece onto my fabric and use that as the placement now the rest of the way around it's not going to match up exactly with the bodice but as long as the center front does 
that's what's important to me, you know. Sometimes by chance they end up matching, and you know, that's just a, a lovely, lovely day. But if they don't, just make sure the center front does. All right, so this is my bodice front. This is my skirt front. And I just have this placed on top of the fabric. I don't have it pinned yet. And remember, I folded it so that this uh, center point of the large motif is in the center. So what I've done is I have just overlapped these by about an inch and a quarter because halfway through there should be my seam allowance. And if at that point that's where it's going to blend, um, that's what I want. So that way this whole design should carry straight down both, um, you know, one way and the other way. So it's, it's a little extra sometimes, but it's nice. It's nice when it works out. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this down and cut it out. And then the, fall, the next piece, so this is the center front. Then I'm going to do the same thing like I did on the bodice where I'm going to transfer these side markings to my side front and then over to my side back and then to my center back. Okay, so I know that I said that I'm probably not going to be adding any width to the hips because it's an A-line, but the more I look at this pattern and how narrow it is, it doesn't actually start to flare till down below, I do want to add some in. Um, looking at their finished size, I'm not going to be having a huge amount of ease, and I don't want it grabbing around there. I want it to be a little bit more flowy. So this is how I'm doing it. Um, this side I have matched up, okay? This is my side front. So I have my front, my center front is going to stay the same. My center back is going to stay the same. It's my side pieces I'm going to be changing. So what I'm going to do is slice it open along this grain line. Almost to the top. Okay, and I'm going, I want to add, um, what do I want to add? Hang on one second. Okay, and so at my hip level, which is right here, I'm going to be adding about an inch. So that's going to translate it into four inches that I'm adding, one for each piece for the side fronts and the side backs. Now that's going to give me extra flare down here at the bottom. But that doesn't bother me because I think that that will just be blended into the style lines of the dress and it won't be noticed at all. So I'm going to do the same type of thing for my side back. Once I have the, because uh, I'm going to match my next piece along here, okay? Once I have that matched, then I'm going to go ahead and slice it and open it up the opposite way towards the center back. The way I'm just doing this is I'm just laying them next to each other. I am putting the center up the center of the white stripe so that when I sew them together, it should kind of blend it together. And I'm going to cut out both wrong sides, flip it over, cut out both right sides, and that should be matched up automatically because the bottoms, the dots, these lines, and the notches are all matched up already, just laying them next to each other. Shift. Yes! Let go. My goodness. Okay. Sorry about that. So I am going to be putting this together in a little bit different order than what it has in the instructions. And um, one of the main reasons is because it has that invisible zipper and I want to be able to put that into the back pieces before everything is sewed together. It'll just be a lot easier to put it in while it's just a back. So First thing is um, get started on the bodice front. Okay, so if you've seen my videos before, you know my routine. The first thing I do is mark my notches, which I, on this fabric, I am just going to be clipping. Remember, I had to change this one, so I'm going to clip it at its new location. And for the circles, um, now these three that are going down the front are strictly for buttonhole placement. And so I'm going to punch the circles out right now, but I'm not going to mark them because I'm going to be doing so much ironing between now and the time I have to draw those, uh, put the buttons on that I know my, my erase, my erasable with heat pen is going to disappear. 
So I'm going to keep this piece handy so that when it comes time to mark those, I can just grab it. But for right now, I'll punch out those holes. So in general, though, when I do, I'm using a heat erasable pen and I can just color in that circle and make my notches. So I'm going to do that to um, my bodice front and my bodice side front. Now there's, um, because this is a princess seam, we are going to need to make sure that we stabilize the curve. Let's see what the instructions say. Uh, yeah, they do tell you to, so that's really nice. Good deal. So what they're going to want you to do is on this front edge right here, they want you to stay stitch it. I will be using my uh, woven stay tape. Just because on princess seams there is so much reinforcement that it's just easier for me. They actually do not want you to reinforce the edge, this long curved edge. So we'll go with that. We'll go with that. But um, let me go ahead and notch this. Now I will also be surging around the edges of each piece individually. I need to trim that better. Um, around each piece individually. So that way I can protect it from wanting to fray and I'll be able to press those seams open. Um, let me go ahead and serge around these pieces. Now when I'm serging, I'm just barely taking it along the edge. If I cut off a few threads or just a little shaving here or there, that's fine. But in general, I'm trying to keep the uh, diameter of my pieces as is. Okay, so over here at my ironing board, I want to show you my tape. It is this stuff here, you know. It works well. I'm still looking for a suitable alternative that's not as expensive, but for right now it works well. It's woven so it does not stretch, and I can just very carefully press it on, work my way around this way, okay, and then just form it around here. And I do that instead of stay stitching, if you want to stay stitched, that's fine. So I'll be putting this stuff here and down the sides before I serge it. That way I can know that it's not going to stretch out of shape while I'm handling it on the serger. Midna, you have to move. You can't just keep going back and forth from one chair to the next chair. Oh my my. Okay, so I have, this is my center front here, and this is my side front. So I have the top pinned up to the point of that first notch, which is this one, and I have the bottom pinned up to the point of this notch, which is down here, okay? Now, in the instructions, what they want you to do is clip this so that it can come out and form around here, okay? Which you can do, which you can do. But I tend to want to stitch it first by easing it and then clip it afterwards um, just to make sure that I have everything uh, sewn together the way I want to. And as you can see, um, this one had, they wanted you to stay stitch, so I put the tape. This one, they did not. And whether or not it's stitched or that's a design issue, it is a little bit uh, larger than the other, which is not a problem because I'm going to ease stitch it in, um, but I just wanted you to be aware of it. If I was using any fabric other than this hardcore cotton woven fabric, um, I definitely would have put stay tape on this side also, just because there's too much of a chance for it to get out of whack. But with this type of fabric, it's pretty easy to ease it back into place. So that's not a problem. So when I'm sewing it, I'm going to sew it with this on top so that I can ease in with the feed dogs on the bottom on um, all of this stuff down here. Okay, so starting at the top and feeding it through. And uh, right now everything's nice and flat, doing 5 eighths. And as soon as I get past my little notch here, that's when I'm going to have to start easing. Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to make sure that I'm holding the top nice and firm and make sure that the bottom is at the same edge over here. And I'm going to pull it 
and let those feed dogs kind of pull it in. And then pull out this pin and go to the next one. If you can see, there's a little bit of the bottom that wants to peek out. I want to pull that back in underneath so it's nice and in line. See the same thing here where it wants to peek out a little bit, so I'm going to go underneath, tug it out. Okay, so I'm at the bottom notch here, our new improved bottom notch, and I can just take it the rest of the way down. So, what I need to do is press these open, and they want you to clip this side. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and make a couple little clips now. I'm going to stop about an eighth inch away from my seam. And the point of that is so that I can press this flat. Okay, those little clips are going to help this part overlap each other. So instead of a big ripply um, edge, they'll just overlap and they'll lay a lot flatter. How they're overlapping each other. That's the whole point, but I'm staying at least an eighth of an inch away from my seam. Good morning. It is the next day, and before I start on my bodice back, I want to show you how it all lines up. So you can see, um, here's the seam. So this is matching up here, but up here it's not, and that's just because of the angles. You know, there's not much you can do about it. Down here, it, I have that stripe coming across. Now, in order to match this up so that this point and this point matched up, I actually ended up having to ease things a little bit differently, and that put this bottom edge about a quarter inch lower. I'm not going to worry about that. It doesn't really matter to me. I think it would have been worse and more obvious if these were out of sync than if this is, and I can just cut that and even that off. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the um, back sides and back center of my bodice together right now. Okay, so these are my pieces for my back. Just like before, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, clip my notches, mark those, and I'm going to serge around each individual piece. Now, on the center back, um, up here I'm going to be putting my woven stay tape. You can stay stitch it too, around here. And I'm also going to be putting it down this side. Just because I want to make sure this stays constant, I can ease this one in to match it, but I want this side to stay nice and firm. Because it is on a slight angle, um, it just would make me feel better. Alright, so this is done. I have my stay tape here. They're both surged around the edges. I didn't surge at the neckline. I don't really need to because I am putting a facing and collar on there. Um, but when I ironed them after I searched it, I sprayed it down with starch, especially this piece, uh, because I'm not stay stitching or anything, just so that that starch can kind of hold it together, kind of the way I do with my lace. So I wanted to show you how I'm pinning this. Um, to match the plaids, I'm actually, I, I drew my little notches on there so I know where they are, but I'm actually going to be focusing more on matching the plaid than matching my notches. So what I'm doing is right here along this blue line, it's an easy reference point for me. Move you closer here. So about 5 eighths in, I'm going to stick my pin in here. And about 5 eighths inch down here, I'm going to stick my pin. So they're both along that same edge of the blue line. And tuck it in, okay? And that's going to make it so that I can match up that because that's going to be the most obvious. So see when I put it in here it's on but down here it's actually above it about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to again put it there and where there's a little bit of a difference when I sew it I'm just going to ease that in. So just like the front piece that's actually making this one side a little bit lower than the other I don't care about that I can make that work. There's enough ease in the bust and everything of this dress that I don't think that quarter inch lowering is going to change anything. So again, I'm sticking my pin in up here and down here and tucking it down because that's the point that we're sewing. We don't really care too much about it matching up here at the edges. It's matching up at the stitching line that counts. So if I can get these two points, 
the rest of it's going to be close enough. But these two are going to be the obvious one because that's up against a white space. Okay, so I hope that helps. I'm going to go ahead and finish pinning these up and I will be stitching down this, uh, connecting the side back and center back of the two pieces. Okay, so these are my back pieces. Now, the pattern itself wants you to go ahead and connect the fronts to the backs and make the skirt and connect it. I'm going to just put this up here, connect my center uh, back of my skirt to my side back of my skirts and sew those on here. And that's because I need to put an invisible zipper down the center. And it is a lot easier to deal with putting that in when you have a nice smaller flat piece to deal with than when you have the whole dress already made up into a big tube basically. Okay, so here they are. Remember I added some space on my side and I'm going to go ahead, um, just go ahead and serge around each individual piece, iron them out. I am going to actually put a little light coat of starch on them too, just to hold everything snug up there. And then I can come in and sew this seam together, the one that's holding the side back to the back piece. All right, so here is my center back skirt pieces. Move you up. And these are my side back pieces here. So what I need to do is sew this part together. So very carefully matching up these plaids um, this way. And you can see it's going to match up really nicely in the back here. So doing the same thing where I'm cleverly pinning it to make sure that they stay equal. All right, so this is the top of my half of my skirt back and I am going to put my bodice up to that and I can match the um, and seams now you remember I had that jog where part of it was longer than the other I'm just going to kind of average it out so like there where it's sticking up just a little bit and this is down a little bit but I'm going to be sewing it at a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then I'm going to come back double sew it and trim it so that's not going to matter one bit so anyhow let me go ahead and pin this and this part the um, plaids are not going to match up going up and down the back they should in the center front but not so much in the back, but that's, that's not going to bother me here. Okay, so I've sewn it. This is the seam where I've sewn the bodice to the skirt. And I know it's hard to tell, so I'm going to draw it. There's a row of stitching right here. Okay, and then you do a second row a quarter inch in. So I have a second row right there. I don't know if you can see right there and right there. So what you're supposed to do, and what the directions say, is to come back and just trim it close to this second row. Okay. Um, with the understanding that this row is the one that's going to hold all the, the fraying in. So I trimmed that for about an inch just looking at it and then I did pinking for about an inch. And I think I'm going to go ahead and actually just use the pinking uh, shears and trim this. It's basically just my surged edge that I'm going to be trimming off. Anything below that I might catch into that stitching line. I changed my mind and I am just trimming it straight because I got to the point up here where all of my layers are and my pinkers just won't go through that. So here's another thing. I probably just need to get a new pair. I've had these since the mid 80s dating myself. Um, but I have no idea what would be a good pair of pinking shears that would last. I keep things forever. Um, and go through multiple layers easily. So if any of you have a good suggestion or have a pair that you love that work really well, please let me know. I'd be curious to hear that. But anyway, I'm just going to use my incredibly sharp and strong little bitty short scissors where I can get in nice and close and trim this seam up. Alright, so we're ready to start dealing with our invisible zipper. Mine is actually a couple inches longer. It calls for 22. I think mine's 24, but you know, that doesn't matter. If it was too short it might be an issue but too long is not. So the first thing I want to do is open it up and flip it upside down and iron it. And I'm going to be pressing the back side trying to, here, on an invisible zipper if you've never dealt with one, it wants to curl closed like that. And I want it to be open like this. So that's why we're ironing it. So. Now, is, once you've got your um, zipper ironed, excuse my hand, once you've got it ironed, don't zip it back closed because as soon as you do, 
it's going to recoil itself and you'll be back to where you started. Alrighty, so going to get started here. Now just a up front, I have never put in an invisible zipper in a dress or something that I was trying to match plaids in before. So this is going to be fun. So we're just going to take it one step at a time. So the first thing I did is with my heat erasable pen, I made a little mark up here where I'm going to want, and my bark is about half an inch low, okay? And that's about where I want the ends, the little stops on my zipper to end up, okay? So that just, I'm going to say, just centering on that red line is where I want my little stop to end up. That's going to help me with my placement. So you only work on one side at a time. And so I'm just arbitrarily going to choose this side. And I'm going to be using my basting tape. This is a washable, water-soluble basting tape. Okay, so it's double sticky on two sides, and it helps me. So my zipper is going to be face down, okay, as I attach it here. So I'm going to actually put the tape on the top side, so my little pull is up here. So I'm going to be putting my tape along these edges on the what would be the, the top side, the correct side all the way up. Okay, so I have my tape on this side. Zipper still open. It is upside down this direction. Okay, so here's my teeth on this side. Here's the tape. And I'm going to start placing it up here so that my stopper is centered on that red line. And for um, guidance here, I'm just going to be lining up the edge of my tape along the edge of my surging line. Okay, so all the way down, the uh, just the little bit of surging is going to be peeking out, just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this tape. It's a double-sided, so part of it is already stuck, and then there's a paper on here to peel off. Getting it started can be fun sometimes. All right, so I'm just going to carefully place it on. As I go, I'm going to do this all the way down my open seam here. Okay, so I have it taped on. It's fairly secure for right now. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch it on. Okay, so this is the invisible zipper foot I'm going to use. They come in various styles and sizes and things. Um, it has two different grooves, so I can do one side on the left side, the other side on the right side. So let me go ahead and pop this onto my machine and get that thread through the hole there to the bottom and we'll get started. Now I'm going to be using the left hole for my it, for this side, okay, and I'm going to try to push it so that I am stitching as close as I can to this coil. So I'm going to go ahead and get a couple stitches started Back stitch them. And we're going to go forward. Now remember, this seam allowance has to be uh, tucked upwards. And you're not going to be able to go all the way down because you're going to run into your stopper here. So just go until you cannot go any longer. Okay, so here's this side now. So when it's zipped, it's going to be like that. So like I said, I've never done an invisible zipper where I'm matching plaids for it before. So this is a learning experience. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding my two together because I don't want to pull my zipper pull up because it's going to recoil what I just ironed. And using my blue pencil, I am marking where all of these blue parts are so that when I'm attaching this part with the tape, I can try my best to make sure that it is lined up properly. Okay, so let me see if I can explain what I'm trying to do here. This is the side that's already attached. And so if I'm to fold this this way, so I'm looking at it from the right side now. When this zipper is installed, it's going to be here. Let's see, I have my little marks on the back. So if this is the other side, 
and it is folded under also, technically I can make sure when I'm putting this tape onto this side that these marks will line up with the uh, print on this side, okay? So, like, well, we'll just get it started here. Let me try to move this one out of the way a bit. Bring this one down. Okay, so see my little blue mark here? That's my first one, and I have my little red line up here where my center of this is going to be going. Oh, and I can already see part of this is stretched out of shape, so this is going to be fun. All right, we can do this. We can do this. So let me pull my tape off. All right. So again, I'm lining the edge of my tape up with the edge of my serging and putting this blue up against that blue. Okay. So now I'm just I'm going to try to be careful that as I pull it down, to first match the blue parts up, and then kind of ease the place in between them. Like that. So you can see these blue marks are lining up with those blue stripes. Okay, so I'm going to do this the rest of the way down. Okay, so I'm having an internal dilemma because I have them just placed next to each other and it looks great. But I really want to zip it up just to double check. If I zip it up, it's going to recoil that other side and I'm going to have to re-iron it. But you know what? At this point, I think it's worth that extra work because if I zip it and it doesn't match, well, then I'm, I'm messed up. So here goes, hoping for the best. Please match. Okay, so so far down here it is. So that's great. Ah, see, right here, it's a little bit off, but that's not bad. Let's see if it continues. Not bad, not bad. This side is a little higher, maybe a sixteenth of an inch higher, though. So, what I want to do is make it lower. Yep, that's going to do it. Okay. All right, I'm going to try to go ahead and sew it without re-ironing it. If it doesn't work, I will iron it, and then I'll sew it the same way, just using the other slot, and I'll be right back. All right, so my zipper is in, and by not sewing this ahead of time, you, make, you can make sure that you're not going to get a bunch or a pucker or something down here, so that's a good thing. So now what I'm going to do is sew my seam down here. So I'm slightly pushing my um, zipper end up out of the way. I'm going to make sure these two are lined up properly here. Ah, drop my pen. Here. And you can kind of see right here is the end of the stitching. So what I want to try to do with my narrow foot I'm going to use is get in there and just start sewing so it goes right up to that point. Okay? And then I can continue it all the way down. Alrighty, so this is my center back now. And I got to tell you, I'm pretty pleased with the way it turned out right down here. So this is about where my zipper ends here. And then I've um, just sewed and pressed it open down below and up above here there's my zipper and it comes all the way up and the stoppers are right up here so I have enough room to sew uh, the seam allowance where my collar is going to be so pretty darn pleased with that um, that was a new one for me with the matching the plaids but it turned out pretty good so yay it's a little bit harder to zip it over here where all of the the uh, layers are, but it goes through. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and with the front pieces, I'm going to do the same thing 
with is attaching the skirt to the bodice. So I'm going to be taking my center front piece, surging around it, my two side pieces, surging around them, sewing them together, and then pressing them open. Okay, so here are my three front pieces of my skirt, my center, my two sides, and I'm going to very carefully pin them together so everything will match up and then sew this and this down here at 5 8 All right, so this is my skirt front, all sewed, seams pressed open. And this is my bodice, well, the bottom of it at least. And I am going to try very carefully to match up the plaids, uh, match up these seams. And then this part is not going to match, and that's just life, that's just going to happen. But the very front will, so very excited about that. So once I get this all pinned up, I'm going to sew it at 5 eighths and then come back and sew it again a quarter inch in and then come back and right next to those stitches, trim it up nice and close. Okay, okay and once again I am back here trimming closely to that second row of stitches. So again, just like on the back, I did my first row here right along here and my second row is a quarter inch in right around here and now I'm just trimming off next to it and these seam allowances are pressed up towards the bodice okay so now I am going to be sewing my side backs together and I'm I'm just going to sew it I'm not going to press these seams open but I'm going to put it onto my dress form inside out just so I can see how it's going to fit. I want to show you what it looks like on my dress form. And um, there's a lot of ease here, which is good. Honestly, I don't want it so tight that I'm going to get any um, creases or anything. Because the whole point of this dress is that it's nice and flat. I shouldn't actually see it come way into my waist. I should be able to see nice flat lines. So, from the side here, it looks pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm slightly concerned about the excess bulk around the bust area right here. I'm going to think about that. The, one of the good things about doing the front piece and then the back piece is that it is very, very easy to make adjustments at this point. Because all you have to do is just take in a little bit. Now you can see on the sides here, I added some um, hip spacing right here, okay? And I don't think that that's changing the style lines at all. Keeping the front and the back panels as is, I think is keeping that one flat style line as it is. So I like that. I'll probably take this in just a little bit right here. Not much. Um, but I probably take it in a little bit just to try to make this a little flatter right there. I did decide to go ahead and take it in. Basically, I took where my stitching was coming across here and just took it straight up, which brought it in a little over 5 eighths from where my other stitching line is, and I think that's going to fit me better. Good morning, and welcome to day three of this project. So I'm getting ready to do the facing and the collar. I wanted to show you, I decided, I've actually already fused the interfacing on here, but I decided to use two different kinds. I'm using a lighter weight interfacing on the facing part, but I'm using a more crisp version on the collar because I want the collar to be crisp, obviously, and uh, the interfacing not to be. So in case you're curious, these, these are the two that I'm using. Um, this one up here is the very, very lightweight that I use for a lot of different things. And this one down here is the uh, crisper one that I'm using. So, in case you were curious, that is what it is. So, the first thing is actually the collar. It's not the facing. So, I have, you have four different pieces. Hang on. So, here is my... Um, interface pieces on the bottom and my non-interface pieces on the top and I'm going to be doing it obviously a little bit different from the directions um, instead of just going up over and down 
what I'm actually going to be doing is sewing this outside edge first all the way across. Okay, so now I have my outside edge seam done. And the point of all this is so that I can get a nice turned in edge. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is grade this interfacing part um, down to just over an eighth of an inch all the way across for uh, both pieces. And then I'm going to, with the assumption that the interfaced part is the part, the public part, the part I want the world to see, and the part that is not interfaced is the underside, okay? I am going to be pressing all of this towards the non-interface part, and then I'm going to come back and understitch it um, right alongside here. So if this is my seam line here, I'm going to be understitching it like an eighth of an inch inside. So still on top of this little sliver, um, but just on that side of this seam line. So let's see if you can see my understitching here. Um, see that little stitch line right there? And this is what it looks like on this side here. Okay, so what that is going to do is make the curve of your edge want to roll over really, really nicely. So you have a really nice edge here without a bunch of bulk. And um, it just gives a nice finish, okay? So at this point, what I need to do is the side seams on it. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it. And where it's going to want to fold, there you go. And where it's going to want to fold is with that rolled over the edge, okay? So I'm going to match it up like that and go ahead and stitch these side seams. And by doing it that way, um, you can understitch it. Otherwise, if you just go up, over, and down, it's very difficult to get that graded, understitched edge all the way over. All right, so at this point, what I'm going to do is clip my corner here. Come on, got a lot of thickness there. And I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch between my seam line and where I'm clipping. And also down here, I'm going to clip this at an angle and come back in here and take some of the bulk out of this interfaced side again. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it right side out, trying not to stretch out the other side here. Use my handy dandy chopstick. I wonder where that came from. And pull out the corners. Now by grading that first seam across the top and then clipping it, we're able to get a pretty sharp little corner here that's very stable, even though I'm using two layers of a pretty thick fabric plus a substantial interfacing. So then this side is ready to press. And like I said, it's going to naturally want to roll over so that all of this stitching and everything is not seen. And on the sides, if you wanted to, you could open it up and understitch along the sides. I'm not going to. I'm just going to be careful that when I'm ironing it, I'm going to try to guide the back side underneath a little bit like that. So this one I ironed already. And you can see, well, that little edge peeks out, but we, we knew that going into it. So that's not a problem. But I'm able to get nice edges. This is a nice finish on that side, and then that corner is really nice. And if you can see, I'm pretty good at my plaids matching on my collar too. So that's another happy thought. So let me go ahead and iron this side, and we'll start placing. So before we can put this onto the dress, I need to make sure I have this shoulder mark here visible and it's not so I'm putting a little piece of my yellow marking tape on there I think yellow shows up pretty good I'm going to do that on both sides because that way we can make sure we have our placement all right so here's my little center dot okay and there's a dot but it's right at the very edge here so I'm just going to use my edge as my guide and that needs to line up right there and the other side is going to kind of cross over that. So it is also lining up at that center dot, and it's kind of crossing over. But um, right here, here I'll put a little pin there. At this point where the dot is, they shouldn't be crossing. All right, 
so that's how you can tell. So let me just pin that on there, right there. And I got those started. Now, these marks here match up with the shoulder line. And you're going to have to do some clipping. Um, if you have it stay stitched up to the stay stitching, I have it taped. So I am actually going to be clipping it somewhat into my tape, just like a quarter inch in. That way I have a little bit of flexibility, but my tape is still going to hold. And I can kind of push that in and round it out and finish pinning it. Just like that. And then the very back. Okay. This, since we already have the um, zipper in, couldn't remember the word zipper for some reason. This back edge goes right up against this edge. Okay. And that way when you zip it, it's going to match up. And the same thing on back here. Well, actually, the back I don't really need to clip. I think that that's going to hold well. It's just that really sharp curve in the front neckline that you might need to some. Um, anyhow, that's how I'm going to pin it. And then I will go ahead and pin the, this side the exact same way. And then after that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to baste it. And I'm probably just going to hand baste it. Um, because this is so thick and the chance of skewing up a matched plaid is just way too tempting to run it through my machine twice. So I'm just going to hand baste this and then I'll come back and do the facing. Okay, so this is basted on and I'm just going to set it aside for a minute and work on the facing. Now, like I said, I already have my interfacing fused on here. And so what I'm going to be doing is sewing it up here at the shoulders at 5 8 and then pressing these seam allowances open and then coming back and surging all around the uh, bottom edge to get a nice clean edge. Now the instructions also want you to come back after it's interfaced and run a row of stay stitching around here, which seems kind of redundant to me, kind of a belt and suspenders kind of thing. But um, I think that their point is they're going to have you clip into it so that when you're attaching it and attaching it to the collar and everything if you do this that it won't stretch out of shape that's what I'm thinking that they're doing that for so it's not a very big piece so I'll go ahead and I'll do that extra row of stay stitching also and this um, I'll do at about half an inch because you want your stay stitching to be at a smaller seam allowance than your final stitching seam allowance so that it's invisible because who wants to see stay stitching peeking out alrighty so here's my neckline obviously this is my facing you can see I have my stay stitching this line here is marking my center front the shoulders are obvious because there's a seam there now hopefully when I get to the end I'm going to have the facing a little too long so I'm just going to fold it in when I get there so that I have it matched up um, exactly so what I'm going to do is flip the facing upside down and match up this center front dot with this center front line here and get started. So I'll pin this. I will pin my shoulder seams and my very back. So the shoulder seam is right here. So I should be able to match that. You can see this is actually fairly thick up here. I've got a boatload of layers going on. So uh, before I finish this off, I'm going to be grading that. It needs to be degraded. So, okay, so here you go. You see I'm at the edge, the very back. So what I'm going to do is fold it so that it also is lining up, but I'm going to make it slightly, slightly smaller, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch smaller just so I can make sure it's going to um, not peek out. So I'm going to go ahead and pin that, everything in between, and then sew around here at 5 8 inch all the way around. I also wanted to show you um, the clipping. Again, it's just in that front area where the curve is really dense. I made these clips 
not to my stay stitching. I left it, you know, again, about an eighth of an inch away from my stay stitching so that it can open up nicely. And that way, um, I'll be able to sew it. If you don't clip it, you won't be able to sew it very well. It'll get too bunchy. So that's the reason for this row of stay stitching. All right, so I have it sewn on, and I want to show you, um, I was able to use my plaid kind of as a guide here but if you don't have something like that what you might want to do is make a little mark on both sides to make sure that when you get up to this point that your stitching is going to line up up there so anyhow that being done it's time to start grading these seams and I'm going to be under stitching you know pressing everything this way and stitching it but the first thing I got to do is take some of this bulk out because like especially right here that's a lot of layers Okay, so this first bit here, I'm going to take up, and I'm basing it off of this seam here. Actually, you know what? That's about a quarter inch, and that's about as close as I feel comfortable with it. I'm going to take a corner off here. This is my collar and fabric piece. I'm going to take around at about that level and the uh, collar piece I'm going to take it just a step up come on it's very thick step up like that and then this is my actual garment piece here. So that's how I'm going to be grading it. Okay, I'm getting ready to understitch this. And at this point, make whatever little cuts you need to so that you can get this as flat as possible so that when you understitch it, um, it'll get the results that you want. So what I'm doing is I have the collar piece down here. I'm not including that, but just the facing is poking up and I'm going to be sewing it. Um, here's my stitching line just inside that about an eighth of an inch in um, all the way around right up here alrighty so I have it understitched and I went ahead and pressed it and I just have it pinned a couple spots the centers and my shoulders just to get that facing somewhat contained while I take a look at how it's gonna be and I think we'll be fine um, what I'm gonna do is come back on the inside and just by hand I'm going to sew all the way around, just catch stitching a few threads at a time along here just to make sure that this facing is going to stay down nice and neatly the whole way. And that way I don't have to worry about it wanting to do one of those types of things or something. Okay, so this is what we have so far. I've got the dress and I think it's fitting nicely. I still have enough ease up here to be comfortable, but I took that extra bulk out. The collar, I, with the stiffer interfacing, it's going to set up nice. You know, big lapels, love that. And I've got my back zipper up here, and you can see it's kind of matching, so that's nice also. So anyhow, I think it's really good so far. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with the sleeves. And I have my two sleeve pieces, of course, so the first thing I need to do is transfer over my marks and serge around each individual piece. Once I get that done, we're going to match these up like this and sew it uh, from the very top down to this dot down here. That's where the vent opening starts. So I have my two pieces here surged and what I did is when I transferred my dots, um, I just drew Drew it in and then drew a line straight out to the side at those points. Uh, here's another one. And that makes it easier to see than just a plain little dot just drawn in the middle of nowhere. So anyhow, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and pin these together all the way down to this point here. And I'm going to make this stitch at 5 8 and then press it open. Um, now when I'm marking it on the back piece, I put a letter B. You know, it helps me remember at a glance which side is the back. I got my sleeves here, and again, matching my plaids, as I do on this project. And I've pressed these seams open. And then down here where the little vent is, um, 
I'm turning that raw edge under so I have a very narrow hem this way. So what I'm going to do is come up, stitch across, and then come back down. I'm going to do that on uh, both sleeves. Then what I also need to do is come up here at the top and there's um, two side circles. The, the center one is where the seam is, so we don't really see that right now. But I need to do two rows of basting stitches so that I can gather this up. Okay, so I have a double row of basting stitches up here. This is a heavier fabric, so doing it this way will make, make sure that I have it um, gathered enough so it'll set in nicely. Now while I was at the machine, I went ahead and sewed my um, center armhole seam or arm seam here and pressed it open. And now, before I go to attach this onto the dress, I want to go ahead and do the hem down here. And it's just calling for a little narrow hem. So I'm just going to turn it up twice and do a uh, just regular stitch all the way around. So on this corner, at 5 8 in, I drew a little line. And that is where I'm turning this straight over. And then I can turn it up right there. And I get my little mitered edge, and then tuck it in. Just like that. And let me find a pin. And that's how I'm going to do that corner. Okay, so I need to actually take a little more bulk out of this seam, too, for a very narrow hem. Um, it's going to have a lot of bulk if I leave all this in there. So what I'm going to do is mark where my 5 8 inch is. And it's at this crease here. So at this crease here. Okay, that's going to be the bottom of my little rolled hem. So I'm going to come in and cut out most of this seam allowance here. I'm cutting to probably within an eighth of an inch of this seam. And that way, when I come up here and I'm going to fold this straight up and then tuck it in, I don't have like so many layers going on here. And that's going to make it a much smoother hem at that point. Alrighty, so I've got my sleeves hemmed. They're in here somewhere. Here you are. So here's how it looks on the hem of my sleeve. Now it's ready, or it's time to go ahead and set the sleeve into the armhole. And because I took in that underarm area at the bust, I'm going to need to make a little bit of adjustment here, but I'll show you as I pin how I'm going to do that. So the first thing I'm doing is pinning the center of the sleeve where there's the seam. Uh, matching it up with the shoulder seam and I'm also going to match up my uh, dots on my sleeve to those same markings over here on my garment so right about there and that's going to show me how much I need to uh, gather these these sleeves here to fit into this space okay now, if I continue to work down the side, I will see where my notches will be lining up, which would be right here. Okay, and you can see when I get to the bottom, I have a gap here. This is the gap from where I took it in in my underarm seam. So let me go ahead and make those same pins placements on the other side here. up at the gathering point and down here at the notches. Now the notches are where it's starting to curve in. Okay, so actually I am going to move these two pins at the notches up about one inch higher than what those notches are. Right about up here. Okay, and then I'm going to pull this bottom pin out. Now unfortunately since it's inside here it's kind of tricky to see, but basically I am just going to be lowering this, the sleeve part. Okay, so here's the concept. I'm, I'll flip it back when I'm, I'm done showing you. 
But basically from this point, I am just going to be pulling this down so that this center seam is still in line with this center seam, but to the point that this will then fit. Okay, and that looks about right actually. And so if I pin it here, and when I stitch it, I stitch it 5 8 from this line here, okay? That's going to lower this armhole exactly enough to take in the amount that I took in, or to, to, to expand it the amount that I need to that I took in from this. Because if I just tried to make the sleeve fit this armhole, it would be too small because I need the same opening size and this is gonna give me the same opening size. If that makes any sense, I hope it does. All right, so now that I have this pin where I want it to go, I'm going to go ahead and just hand baste it in place so that I can make sure that it's being held very securely. And once it's basted, then I'm gonna come back and trim this part out. Alrighty, so I gathered uh, where I was supposed to between the two dots and um, and it, it's fine it's fine it looks okay but you can kind of see where those puckers are because to me it seems like there's an excessive amount of space in there to get it just eased in um, I think if I was to do this again I would actually spread this easing out you know over a longer distance so that it wasn't as apt to get these tiny little puckers in there, but not a big deal at all. Um, I'm gonna show you this. What I've done is I have stitched it all the way around at 5 8 and then uh, pretty much where I trimmed it, which is just a little bit above the two notches, I came back and I did a second row of stitches um, because this is where all the stress is going to be in that underarm. And then because I trimmed it so everything was exposed and this fabric frays a lot, I then came back and from, you know, about that same point, I just surged over this so that um, it's nice and protected and it's not gonna fray. So, from the outside, this is our sleeve um, right here. From, this is the very top and the underarm here. Of course, you've seen the little cuff part here, and I think that that's turned out pretty well. So, um, I mean, actually, I still have to do the other side, so let me do the other sleeve, and I'll pop this on the dress form, and we'll take a look at it. Right, so this is what we have right now. I've got to tell you, I am getting very schoolgirl vibes off of it, but we've come this far, and it does look rather comfortable. So I had to try this on real quick just so I could know where I wanted the hem to be and I like it. I actually I think it's pretty darn cute so I'm excited about that. Now when I was looking at myself in the mirror and everything I made a note um, that my bottom of my hem should be at the top yellow line which is this one. I don't even know why I did that because I wasn't paying attention because the lines go up and down, but I'm pretty sure I meant at its highest point. So that's what we're going to go with. And because this is a very rounded hemline, I am going to use my fallback, which is stretch lace using a lovely iconic vintage mustard yellow. <laughs> so what I'm going to be doing, if I want say this point to be my uh, bottom of my hem. It's about five inches that what I'm going to need if this is the bottom edge, okay? So what I'm going to do is actually cut three inches off of the bottom edge. I should have paid attention. I usually have to trim shortened skirts because I have shorter legs, but you know what? I didn't. So what I need to do is actually go around and mark where that three inch point is because you can't cut straight, you know, because it's a circular skirt. So I'm going to do this all the way around. And then get my funky little holiday fiskers and just cut straight around following my marks. Just now I am going to sew my stretch lace on. And um, I'm actually going to be placing it this time with the this sewing band here 
maybe placing that just below my serged edge because after I trimmed it I went ahead and serged it just because this frays a lot I didn't want to deal with anything like that so um, with the understanding that I am going to be doing a straight stitch down this part here let me show you. this here is the track I'm going to be following with my sewing machine um, what I'll do is just stretch it sew some you know stretch it so like that and what that does is work some ease into the lace and because this is rounded when I go to turn it it's going to have a nice even edge so just on my sewing machine regular straight stitch I'm going to start here and just sew all the way down all right so I have it sewn on as you can see right there and so what I'm going to be doing is I folded it over and you can see where it it's uh, a little bit kind of elastic ish you know it's going to make that nice curve so I'm going to measure an inch and a half from my stitching line to the edge so that way I can get a fairly even hem all the way around and once I have it roughly pinned I'm going to come back and press it so I have a nice crisp edge so at this point I am just with a needle and thread going through and um, stitching this on just catching a thread here and there and you can see well maybe you can't and that's the whole point that I have already hemmed this part and it's pretty much invisible so that's the beauty of the stretch lace hem is that you have a nice curve you can get a nice sharp edge but at the same time you still have a little invisible hem so actually I was hunting through my collection and I found 10 vintage red swirly looking buttons fisheye kind of buttons with a little shank on the back so happy day I am going to use these on here so why not so at this point the marks that were on the bodice front there's three and then for this view I'm putting two more down on the skirt and on that skirt front piece there's two more dots and that's where we're going to pop them on now this is just sewing it onto fabric there is no interfacing behind here anything like that um, because they're just for look but since these buttons are pretty heavy um, I'm just gonna cut a little piece and just put it behind here as I sew it on just for a little bit added stability it's nothing that's going to show and it's strictly for anchoring that button on show that girl dating myself but I, that's what it reminds me of um, it actually went together pretty smoothly and if I wasn't matching plaids it would have gone together a lot faster uh, but it is a good project for plaid you know because everything is nice and smooth so there's that putting the invisible zipper in with plaid was new for me but it worked out so that was nice um, I think the, there's only two things I would change. First of all, and it's just because this is plaid, I put these buttons on based on their button placement guide, but because I got this big, two big white stripes and a cat um, going down my front, you can tell really clearly where they are, and I think I would justify up my button placement based on those stripes. So I think I'll move those buttons. And the other thing is, I'll insert some pockets, you know. Um, I didn't want to, it didn't come with pockets, and I didn't want to stick them in the first time in case 
there was a problem um, because the dress is kind of slim on the sides in general, but I th there's plenty of room, so I think I would slip some side pockets in there. Um, but other than that, it's, it's actually pretty cute. Now, as far as the bodice sizing, um, they had their little chart, you know, if your bust is one inch different, two inch different, three inch different, whatever, you go according to that, which bodice piece you're cutting out. And I think that they're guessing a little big, you know. Based on their measurements, I should have cut out one, but honestly, I had so much extra going on up here. I think I'm going to size it down as far as the cup size option. But everything else fit pretty well. Now, remember, I did expand that hip uh, piece on the side front and side back, so I would have extra room on the side. And that gave each of those pieces about that much more flair in the front and back. And I don't think that that changed the style at all. And it definitely made it more comfortable for me um, because of my figure shape. Straight skirts just, I have issues. I have a lot of trouble with straight skirts. So making it slightly more flared is good. And it was a flared skirt to start with. It Mine just made it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it's good. I think it's fun. Actually, I have another project in mind because I had extra plaid left over of making a little uh, jacket to go with this. Because I think this is more of a fall type of thing. So I'll put it in my closet for fall. Um, but I think I'm going to make a little jacket to go along with it. Because, you know, in the 60s, 70s, there was a lot of, of sets. And I think that that'll work. So that'll be next on the project list. So hope you liked it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Live in my new colored life, free of the city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and some spin, and move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red barn green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This life pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.